Welcome everyone, this is Amir Tsalfati and um, I wanted to give you some breaking news on what is going on in the Ukraine with Russia but also what is going on in in Syria and also Iran. So there are some amazing developments right now and I think that uh, a lot of you would like to hear that. So let me wait uh, a couple minutes and see that people are connecting. In the meantime, I'll tell you that we just had a, an amazing weekend. Uh, 1,200 people came to our awaiting his return conference. Um, uh, Pastor Barry, Pastor Mike and myself spoke. Then the next day uh, on Sunday morning, I spoke here um, on the last trumpet. So we are going to Apart from the whole conference of Saturday, which is already on YouTube, my Sunday message will be premiere this Friday on our YouTube channel. But hey, I'm waiting for everyone to connect so I can give you some breaking news from what is from 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 the Ukrainian, Syrian, Iranian, uh, Belarus area. So let me just see that uh, people are connecting. Please press uh, the uh, share button so um, many can uh, hear that at the same time. Okay, so breaking news. Um, the leaders, uh, the, the separatists in uh, eastern Ukraine, the leaders of the two uh, regions that are seeking independence, the Donetsk and the Lugansk, they officially uh, ask President Putin to recognize them as independent. But let me explain what it means. It means that they want not just the territory that they have already, but they want the rest of the territory that Ukraine is still controlling and the Ukrainian military is there. And that will require Russian invasion to complete the territory of these two uh, entities that will be recognized by Russia most likely today. Folks, again, I'm trying to say that there is a request from Putin to come and help those two regions, Donetsk and Lugansk, to take that which they believe belongs to them. It's not like uh, they don't describe it as Russia is taking over Ukrainian territory. They are talking about territory that belongs to two political entities that already exist as far as they're concerned, Lugansk and Donetsk. And again, um, I'm, I'm on Telegram, and I hope you have it, I'm going to put the map so you can see the, the territory that they have so far and the rest of the ter ter territory that they expect to get if they... Um, declare uh, independence. This is the first time the Russian Security Council is con convening, is meeting live on camera in every one of the representatives, generals and ministers, all stepped up there to the podium to talk about the um, the uh, Ukrainian um, violations of ceasefire and agreements. One thing that caught the attention of Putin is the fact that uh, President uh, Zelensky from uh, Ukraine said that uh, Ukraine has also a right to have nuclear weapon. This is something Putin is going to use. That's exactly what he's afraid of. This is exactly what he doesn't want to hear or see or even think of. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that in the next few hours, we are going to see Russia coming to help two new countries that are going to be born before our very eyes, Donetsk and Lugansk. These are areas that already have their own leaders and they want now to declare independence and for that they need the russian approval and for the russians to come and help them they need to have that ceremonial act of recognizing them 
So it will not be, as far as the Russians are concerned, invading into Ukraine. It will be entering into two territories that asked them to come in and completing the takeover of that which belong to these two new entities. I hope you understand what I'm saying, but Putin prepared a very, very, very thought after and, uh, and, 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 and I would say almost genius plan to, uh, to say to the whole world, I'm not invading Ukraine. This is absolutely not happening. I'm helping people just like Syria asked Iran to come in and Syria asked Russia to come in. Now Donetsk and Lugansk are asking us to come in to help them. That's all. So this is the first thing that is happening in the, in, right now as we speak. Um, another thing, there's a lot of Russian boots on the ground already in those territories, but they are not Russian soldiers dressed like Russian soldiers with Russian uh, military IDs. These are mercenaries belong to a private army called Wagner that Russia is operating. It's operating it in Syria and in Libya and now also in that area as well. Wherever Putin wants to act but without being seen and so bodies will not be returned in coffins of, uh, you know, of military coffins, he is sending this Wagner military group. He asked them today not to take TikTok. You know what it means. It means that don't document anything that you're about to do. This is quite interesting. These are from the last few, I guess, from the last two hours, what I'm telling you right now. Now comes the thing that should interest you more than ever, uh, more than anything else. And that's, of course, what th does that has to do with this? First of all, another thing you, you may not know is while Russia said to the world that they are pulling out of Belarus once the military drill is over, mm -mm, Russia is not, not only not pulling out of Belarus, Russia is staying in Belarus indefinitely. That means that without you knowing, Russia took over a country and they're staying there. And uh, they received the, the permission of the uh, president of Belarus to stay there. So the Western world is watching Russia's expansion already without even entering into the Ukraine. So this is what's going on over there. Now, what you cannot see and may not even know is that as we speak, Iran is sending tons of reinforcement to their proxies in Syria, in eastern Syria. We are, we've been witnessing landing of cargo planes and lots of trucks loaded with missiles crossing the Iraqi-Syrian border non-stop. Now, you're probably going to ask yourself, how come Israel is not doing much about it? Okay, now comes the, now comes the trick. Out of the blue, the Russian foreign minister, Lavrov, Sergei Lavrov, said today that Russia is not in favor of the Israeli strikes in Syria. Russia thinks it's a violation of Syria's sovereignty. Russia thinks it's harming the Syrian efforts to fight terrorism. And basically, Russia said we're standing by the Syrian military against Israeli strikes in Syria. You're probably asking yourself, how come the Russians changed their tone? And while they're so busy with Ukraine, they're talking about Israel. No, let me explain to you why. In the last 48 hours, the Israeli foreign minister and other ministers of the Israeli government publicly said to the press that should an invasion take place in Ukraine, Israel will stand by its ally America and may consider joining those sanctions. Now, I, I, I don't know if you understand what I just said. Israel just said to the Russians, if you will invade into the Ukraine, we will take America's side. 
The difference between America and Israel, America can say that. Israel cannot say that because Israel has Russian soldiers literally on its borders. When the Russians heard the Israeli uh, remarks, the Russians got so angry that they are now saying to Israel, whatever you're planning on doing in Syria, forget about it. We will not allow you to do that anymore. For so long I've been teaching, so long I've been teaching, that I believe that that which will cause Ezekiel 38 to come to pass is the destruction of Damascus. I believe that something is going to happen that will cause Damascus to fall, to be destroyed. And it might be even Israeli action, I'm not sure. But I know one thing, Israel will be held accountable for it and will be blamed for it. And that will, of course, help uh, escalating this whole thing. I believe we're watching the whole region going that, towards that direction. And while America is busy trying to appease Iran and signing a deal with Iran, which, by the way, will be even worse than the one Obama signed with them in 2014, 2015, now uh, the Iranians are ready. They're ready for two things. To, to get their enriched uranium, which they already almost have enough for a bomb, but they're also ready to have billions of dollars that America will unfreeze as a result of the lifting of the sanctions and the signing of a new deal. And those billions will be towards its proxies in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, and also in Gaza and uh, Lebanon. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening right now is the world is fixing its eyes on Ukraine. There will be a very limited invasion there just for the sake of those two newly recognized uh, entities, uh, Donetsk and Lugansk. But what really is going on is the Russian bolstering their presence in Syria and the Russians telling Israel, you're no longer allowed to operate on Syrian soil. And the Russians are turning blind eye to the Iranian reinforcement of all of their proxies in Syria. Folks, this is amazing what we're watching right now. And, and again, the pretext for the Russians to have this limited invasion is being given to the world right now. I believe invasion is just a matter of Hours, maybe, maybe, maybe even tonight. And why? Because there has to have been a political slash um, um, military reason for Russia to say that, to do that. And the reason is now there. Ukraine, as far as the Russians are concerned, is attacking areas that are independent. Those independent areas are asking for our help. We will help them. And this is what's going to happen. I, if you don't have Telegram, get it because I'm posting right now the map that shows you those two regions. Uh, on that map, you will see the border that is existing right now, where the separatists on one side and the Ukrainian army on the other side. But all that area that is highlighted in gray is what the separatists wants as their country. And that is the area that I believe Russia will take over for them. So get, um, get um, um, uh, Telegram Messenger and uh, subscribe to my channel. I've got a 204,000 subscribers. So if you see any other channel that has, I don't know, 10, 20,000, that's not me. That's someone who's pretending to be me. Uh, just don't go there. I'm not sure even what they're saying there. Um, and again, uh, I'll be updating you more. But again, remember, Bible prophecy is not about countries and what's going on between themselves. It's about countries and what they're going to do to Israel. Remember that. It's important. Prophecy is not about uh, Ukraine and Russia. It's not about America and Canada. It's not about uh, uh, China and, 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 and uh, 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 I don't know, uh, uh Hong Kong or whatever, uh, it's about 
what these countries eventually are going to do to Israel. And so remember to keep an eye on Damascus and remember to keep an eye on the preparation of the Russians and the Iranians. And shortly after, the Turks will join as for what we know from Ezekiel chapter 38. Okay, so I'll keep updating you. Please share this. These are breaking news. There's already a casus belli, good enough reason for war that is being now formed by the Russians. Again, on a telegram, I'm going to post right now a map so you see which is the area that they're going to take. You'll see the border that they most likely will move all the way so they can have the entire area of Donetsk and the entire area of uh, Lugansk in the hands of these newly, newly recognized republics. All right, thank you, God bless you. And, um, and uh, some people ask me um, regarding um, the, um, my new book, Revealing Revelation, pre-order it on Amazon right now. Amazon tomorrow is planning on purchasing the books and when all the other book distributors are seeing Amazon, that's when they order it for bookstores all around the world. So help me by pre-ordering it now so bookstores all around the world eventually will take it as well. Thank you. Love you. God